yeah so it was really cool talking to mark because i mean being a writer to writer talking to writer writer because you understand the amount of work that goes in and how you think about your output of what um you know i just what, think you enjoyed your little dance yeah you're trying to do your little you know you're trying to do a story uh you know you're trying to do storytelling and it's like when you're just on the outside just reading it for about 15 minutes this is what i don't like about mainstream comics is that it's gone down to just freaking 15 minutes now or even less sometimes you can read in about 10 minutes and i think this it's like they rely too much on the artist because um the writer's got to write about five different stories to make money right and uh and keep them keep their name pop out there but they're not actually doing quality work and that's why i think nobody's really enjoying mainstream comics as much as they're enjoying manga and that's where i think the problem lies with the industry as a whole and I that's think every time I, you give up hope on the book so like someone brings yeah. out and renews something there's good books still yeah. in all the areas right. like dc still doing good books marvel right but people but but what they're doing is they're not encouraging like you heard at mark say they're not encouraging people to go buy the books they're not encouraging people to go to the comic books uh, you know the comic books aren't the stinky smelly sweat drenched places there were before but they never were that like that there were only one or two and those one or two were always held up as this is what comic books are like i mean don't you comic... miss that kind of comic shop i i miss oh, those i i, I, enjoy, <laughs> those awesome. I enjoy the comic book shops like um what used to be like uh mark one comics in the big open uh yeah. underground you know underground basement in <laughs> town. Oh, yeah but it was like you went there but so open there's lots of rows of stuff now it's like my place it's like the cubby hole because movies basically decided well you know what we have all the material so why do we need the money from the comics anymore like it's it doesn't it doesn't you know it's a defeatist profit profit uh, prospect so you've got indie indie people like uh, i mean like, Mike mentioned like comics are art like so you've got your art you've got your beautiful covers you've got your art inside you've got your storytelling yep. you've got your writing and so i mean right. you're buying art and so if you enjoy the art but you you, but, you do have value it's in a cooperation it. between the artist and the writer and if the writer isn't doing his job right then and then then why why should the artist spend all that time trying to make it pop the writer should do as much hard work as the artist do i believe that because i it probably I, it, it, it probably boils down but to the story though anybody. doesn't it like a good story can be good with regardless of the writing and the art but, if it's a if, solid story true but at the end of the day do you want to pay five bucks for five minute read what well, something like rocks your world like as a story like as a concept it, mm. it it doesn't really matter you know if you put your time into it and it changes your your view on something and you're like wow that was actually amazing even though it looked like black and white scribbly it wasn't great like that they can do that occasionally Right. But, like, but it it's a, a, visual, a, a visual thing, comics, right? It mm. is a visual thing. I, I mean, buy more to the visual, personally, but mm. there's different people there. Yeah, but you're still trying to, like, tell a story, right? Tell a story. It's a mm. story mm. with pictures, right? Mm. It's not yeah. pictures and then a little bit of text. Because otherwise, it's just, you might as well watch a freaking movie if you want to watch sto pictures. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, if you're getting something out of it as a visual, like, storyboard, even and you're not reading the word balloons, but you're taking in the story, it's still got a value to you. It's still doing its job. Yeah, but it's like, a, I love a story the where I, mm -hmm. the customer in the end is going like, okay, so I pay five bucks for this, and I'm gonna say that in US, right? So we're talking, we're talking about twelve dollars here, something like that, right? That's like almost half our half an hour of wages so why shouldn't it be worth half an hour of our time reading it right but sometimes there can be a beautiful cover that totally is worth that or the the story itself the art in there is totally worth it or the writing's totally worth it and that's where they've gotten to now with barren covers and i buy barren covers you know right and i've bought a whole freaking mm. six of them this week at ten dollars a piece almost because just for the cover because but they I look beautiful know, they look beautiful, because but also <laughs> I've read all the co uh, stories inside previously as well. And those are from Image, who actually believe in storytelling, right? 
those writers at images really know how to tell you know they they know they got to sell and compete against something like marvel who's got a couple billion dollars production value backing something whereas they don't and so we have to come up like this is so i'm leaning into why i'm trying to get into what i said segue to what we're doing so for us we're like we can't compete with that shit. we can't compete with a billion dollar industry that you know uh, sorry a billion dollar multinational company and trying to get one comic book out and getting trying to ha get some sort of you know, patterns out of there so we do what we try to do is by cover right we try to get a really good card cover good heavy duty paper because so we go say it's quality right mm. it's not it's not freaking let me see oh, i can't even bother getting it's it not because news it's very yeah uh, no no it's even if new sprint is good i don't mind new sprint new sprint's got more value to me than the silly slim um ink comes off of my fingernails uh of marvel comics kind of property or all the covers so thin that you know it just as soon as you get it it bends over and it's like it's it's got a crease in it it's like it's no i can't hold on to that and pass it to my mate and hey read it by the time it gets back it's all creases everywhere or the, there's you know fingerprints on it and so what well, does make sense i mean that's the choice i suppose it's it feels like better quality when you got card stock and it would be more durable yeah. like you say and then, more, and then you're more willing to pay that five dollar than pay for five dollar for cheap quality prints Maybe. right and then so then the customer is like that's why that's why i think the com company is the mainstream too marvel and dc are suffering so horrendously they can lie about it or pretend that that it's not they're so suffering horrendously because they've dropped quality of production they've dropped quality of uh, storytelling and i'm not trying to say this to prop myself up i'm a comic book fan i've always been a comic book fan mm -hmm. and that's what it comes down to like, but I mean, when they, these are the when reasons this, yeah what, these are the they reasons drop, why the indie comp i think in the in the comics is a good time for them to shine more than before i think that's it because like mike and myself right as writers we're competing against it but they're saying we have to do better as with quality we have to do better with artwork we have to tell a better story because we don't have a you know multinational company that has a hollywood at their backing or you know to promote all, all these outlets to promote their work we just got it we just do it on our own so we got to do the best we can and i think the idea of them going off at manga shows how much they dislike the actual idea of comics at all now. who's gone off at of manga Jin, uh, uh, Jerry Conway. There's a whole bunch of them right now because it's like, okay, we don't like. We think it's all about boobies, so we got to save the children. Same thing happens with comics. Way back in 1950s, same thing, same story. So I think the idea is that with these guys, uh, as they get old, they basically regress on what comics was about. Was fun escapism good storytelling great artwork you know just tell them um, try and invite people into this world i mean as comic book rock, um, fans we've always said hey his, have you ever heard you know have you heard of avengers superman check this out man i love this you know want to read check it out well, what's you know did you see that movie well here's the comic book about it that's where it's from but that's not there anymore you know that's not there anymore because it's like you know you can basically download it if you want and if you don't like it you don't even buy it whereas we you know we're basically going if you like it buy it you know because the torrenting is never going to go away digital downloads will never go away it'll always be there nobody can stop something that's always been there we used to tape freaking songs off the radio that we never bought it's in the 80s yeah right because we can afford the freaking 16 dollar tapes because we're little kids and now eight-year-old kids we can afford our favorite falco amadeo song so we just you know grab a blank tape and stick it in there and we tape and listen to it rock me amadeos you know or walk this way by Aerosmith. this is something i was thinking uh, last uh, night about uh, the download part uh, because some people have mentioned the other side of it like that if you have your comic get that up in the you know in the piracy sites it's like uh, you kind of have made it. You become so popular in a sense. So this is another form of advertisement for you. In a yeah. Way. 
So maybe it's not that bad if you come to think about it. But again, yeah, it has its pros and cons. It's like a confirmation at the same time. It's kind of, <laughs> it's like trouble for the green meter, but. There's visibility, eh? Like, so, I mean, yes. you're not getting your dollars, but then more people are aware of what you're doing. And they might buy your work later, who knows? Yeah. Right, when they can afford you. But that's the same thing happened with me. Like, I mean, I put up that link for Clip Studio Paint, uh, Clip Studio, um, dot net. I mean, I, I haven't been able to afford that for years, but I've used it. And I even mentioned on the webinar I did the other day that I've used to learn how to do the tools. And now, in the last few years, I've been able to afford it. Not only that, I've been able to give it to my nephew as well, right? And then I've gone up to a higher level and pay for the higher costing one. Because you're not always going to be poor if you're still working hard to get to do work. And so the same thing with comics. Just because you pirated something yesterday doesn't mean you're not going to buy it tomorrow. I mean, it's a 50-50 chance. But if you like something enough, you will. And yeah, well, if you fell in love with something and then you watched it, you read it all and you enjoyed it, and mm -hmm. then you came across it at a comic show and it's in a box and it's the right price, you probably would grab it. You go, oh, yeah. that was actually really cool. It's different. I, I didn't think I'd find a hard copy of it. I think yeah. part of it's the accessibility and also the amount of product out there. Yeah. makes it hard there's just such a big spread that you know it's hard to find and then also it's not in every shop it's you know like most towns around the country don't necessarily have a comic shop i don't think i ever um, saw actual comic shop until i went to auckland and yeah. that was in the 90s and i was like about 17 years old you know the good, like, days, the good old days <laughs> there were like there were like spinner racks what i didn't even know what that's what they were called until recently but there were spinner racks at secondhand shops mm. up in kaikoi up in um, um yeah up in kaikoi and then there also you had the news prints this is the problem when they went away from the news prints uh, like the new store um what's called uh comics from the um news prints whatever they call them yeah newsstands, news stands sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when they went away from that, they took away and specialized it. And so we have faced when when COVID hit, we real you know, it showed you what happens when you go away from making it in front of putting it in front of everybody to just putting it in a little air, you know, specialized area. Mm -hmm. And so and then when that specialized area gets shut down, you got online. And so that's where I think the huge uptick on um Pirating actually probably, if you, I reckon if they judged how many, how much pirating happened last year compared to the previous years, they might actually realize there's more pirating than last year than ever before because everybody was stuck at home, right? Mm -hmm. And they couldn't get access to their comic shops, mm -hmm. but they still have to come out sometime. And, you know, I mean, we are lucky we already have done for a whole year now. We've been out, but like overseas, I mean, you know, they well, well, want to get back there for there is always a digital option too right yeah yeah so i mean we got to see how much digital digital sales went up well, I, I guess potentially if you're going digital though like when you hop online and go i might buy a comic online like when you can torrent or watch a video of it you've you'd, you've got yeah. just as easy accessibility either way and so you unless you're really committed to doing something yeah. you yeah. may well just go the other way i watch a lot of videos on the marvel and dc ones to keep up with what's going on because i yeah. can't afford all of them even if i could if i was yeah. in the shop i'd probably buy some of them because i like yeah. them like i like suicide yeah. squad a lot they've got some cool stuff they've got awesome new series started with fun new characters i would buy that if i went into a comic shop and it was there and i was like well what should i buy yeah. today but if i'm online and i watch yeah i'm, I'm like i don't own it now yeah. <laughs> and then there's a video to watch I, i'll watch and check it out i yeah. wanted to make a question okay. for you I wanted to make a question for you. Like uh, earlier on, uh, you mentioned uh, the Western comics, US mostly, and uh, manga. And usually, if I hear, if I rem if I got it right, its manga issue is basically a, a small book of many pages, right? Yeah. So, uh, is the equivalent a trade paperback? Because I hear them people mostly prefer trade paperbacks. They don't want to okay. stay to wait, you know, for this issue to come out. They want to wait for all of them to finish the series and then they gather them in volumes. More people that come into trade paperbacks as a different mm. faction. So, like, I really like floppies and I put value on the old issues where you got issue one to 390 or something. Uh, 
and people go out their way to collect those, which I'm into, but then yeah. other people, especially as they've got smaller living spaces, now with people minimalizing and stuff, they lean more towards nice, clean, concise, you know, so omnibus. It's a practical matter then. So it's a practical yeah. matter. So uh, it's, like, you know, it's, it's a it's preference. There's definitely people who prepare it, um, yeah. prefer it. I think Aru might prefer it. Like I prefer floppies, but definitely there's a whole half yeah. of the comic group and, you know, who, or those kind of collectors that will go, I prefer a lovely, clean trade paperback with everything in it. I actually like floppies. I think um, I like floppies because it's individual uh, covers. Right. It's, yeah, nostalgia. Uh, I so I don't mind. I don't mind the graphic novels uh, if I've already read the, my floppies, right? Or if I, you know, uh, if I can't get because if they've gone out of print and I can't get a hold of them, then I'll try to get the, uh, you know, the floppies. I mean the graphics. But I mean, the, there's there's a unique thing about floppies is that each one of them have different covers, right? Each issue, there's you can end up with six individual covers. Um, talking about um manga right so most of these come out as chapters if i remember right they come out like something like about 14 pages and there's a chapter and then they get collected and then released as a volume uh, i don't know much about how it's done uh and i don't want and i don't want to say that i know and seem to be ignorant but like so this is like retails one of these retails for about nine dollars us so it's around about ten dollars new zone right i mean twenty dollars new zone so this is dead man wonderland now, the here's where I have a problem with why the U.S. market is also uh, uh, ruined comics, and the and the thing is, when you have a manga, it becomes popular. Say about a year or two later, they go back and do the first twelve volumes or ten volumes, right, of it. If they only do twelve volumes, that is, or seven volumes, whatever, and turn it into a because how, depending on popularity, they turn it into an anime. And the anime becomes, as my uh, my mate Black Sage D said, they're freaking advertising for the manga. Now, mm -hmm. why aren't comics doing that? You have 80 years full of stories written every month, sometimes two, three different titles of the Batman coming out. Right now, it's probably about six if I, if I think about it. Right. So if the Japanese could s export, I, I think there's about, what, something about 30 million people. I'm not even sure how many million people are in Japan. Nowhere near, nowhere near America. Right. But totally, totally sold out, sold every single item they ever published from the American comic industry, but with one comp, with one title. Right. Which was um, last year's. Um, I actually enjoyed it. Demon Slayer. Kamachi de Yoba, Kayoba or something like that. And so 12, 12 episodes and into a movie, straight bang into it. So if Marvel did that for every title they put out, but they can't because they change it every freaking four years to number one again, even with that, they could still do it. Why can't they turn every title they have, Aquaman, and they tried that in the 80s and it was going really well in the 90s as well, but then they just, that's drop the ball right you had x-man adventures or something like that and world reign and the x-man yeah, yeah. um, batman it was so cool all the kids growing up at that time were into it they loved it you know they were, the comic industry was blossoming because of that blooming because of that because you had mom batman look i can't no, it says it's from a comic book can we you know can you find a comic book shop yeah, can yeah. We, next time we go to somewhere can we look that is where manga wins because manga is going you know what we're going to make uh every popular and the word is popular and very well received by our audience into a, a anime series and then we'll get a girl band a boy band do a title so guess what it gets more popular because it's their favorite you know uh, J pop band doing a thing, um, doing a uh, theme to it, an out theme and anything. And then also through it, you get all this music going. Okay, cool. Now it's sensory, visual, as well as, you know, all this emotional thing coming into it. I mean, I sometimes pull a tear at a freaking anime, right? These little, you know, these little lines on the, on the TV screen is making me pull a tear. And this is where 
they haven't grasped any longer these new writers and these new corporate entities don't realize that even though they're freaking moving pictures drawings they have we can also emotionally be tied to it as human beings because every writer's there is trying to emotionally tie you to what the story is about and i think that's why the american comic industry is dead in the water it's got a, it's going to take about five years of rewriting the uh, rewriting the ship to get it right again because i'm telling you man you can't come back when the top 20 selling comics you know sequential art i'll call it because if we just say comics that means we're just saying american comics and or, and then if we say manga then it's just you know yeah, yeah. Asian. so let's say sequential art which europeans yeah. are very came up with the idea which i think i'm right because that was a way way better word for it so we could out and saying you know what why don't we just get a super um, find the best written stories that everybody loves and turn it into anime animated series so which is the okay let's do a poll which is the best story you like out of uh x-men or oh, x-men's already been done which is really brilliant Everybody and and the thing was the guys they said that um, I heard about an interview where they said we don't write it for kids We just wrote it as it is. We didn't try to dumb it down All right, and this is what they try to do now with animation is they dumb it down. I like a joke everyone day, but You gotta not try to dumb it down bit for people because it didn't want to last the years if you if you write anything just for now Then it's gonna die now right uh it's like political humor which we myself and constantino do right now it's split you know with the and pj it's for yeah. now it's not for next year it's for now and so but you know you can't sort of that's something something but if you're doing comics you can't politicize it to this year because i want to be i can still read a chris Claremont book and go damn that's good I can go buy my, yeah. you know i can go buy my pop things from the 1980s and be excited about it i can't do that for the last five ten years yeah. there's nothing in the last five ten years that i'm excited about because i i I'm, i'll confuse everybody because they don't know i'll go you know what if you want to read a comic book uh that's good go pick up watchman go pick up hellblazer from the first 300s uh or constantine you know uh go pick up uh freaking uh kick ass you know go pick up um sandman even though yeah don't worry about the show, but go pick up go <laughs> read the comics, you know, or go pick up Lucifer. If you'd like to enjoy the TV series, cool. That's really good on its own. Go read the comic book. Mm -hmm. I zombie, you like that? Go read the comic book, which is more fun, right? It's not yeah. tied into a sequence, like an episode of, uh, you know, drama, cop drama type thing, medical drama. I mean, go read Preacher, right? You've seen the TV series? Go freaking read that. I can't say that for the last 10 years. You tell me if I can tell you any comic that is good enough to compete with any other shit that came before the last 10 years. It can't. It can't because it doesn't measure up to the quality of art, the quality of writing, and those guys who knew it. They I can't remember when Walking Dead came out, but it probably was before yeah. 10 years ago. Right? But what about about which one? The... Walking Dead was solid. Yeah. Oh, that was in 20. 2000 wasn't it 20 oh, years maybe yeah it was yeah. early 2000 yeah uh, right. what about the, the, the what about the yeah. boys invisible uh, yeah artists? right yeah. So, i mean you're talking about boys right so you know i like i don't even i mean here's me i love the boys so much every just about every single of my issues are signed by the artist all right this is starlight mm -hmm. <laughs> right mm -hmm. this is what fandom is about right when you when you like something so much you just branch out into everything else but i won't watch the tv series because i know what's happening with tv shows they'll just ruin my ruin what i enjoy in the books mm -hmm. um you know and they will tell you know they can't pull the same punches you pulled in the comic books i mean calling from <laughs> spoiler calling uh, making um professor x out to be a you know p word with the school in the boys you couldn't do that in the show and that's the greatness about having comics it's yeah. it's the escapism that is just there on paper forever right or mm -hmm. digitally you know but i i think 
that's why I don't I can't name anything that came up. Oh, actually, I can say a character that I enjoyed. Right? The character I can I can say I enjoyed, right? So I can say oops. I enjoyed this character who was a gimmick character, right? Mm -hmm. Paul. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can say this is the only character that I actually can actually say I liked, right? Um, and even X23 came out way back in the 2000s, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you say, oh, it's X23, Wolverine, yeah, but that's, yeah, Mark Miller. Was it? No, it was Crusado who came up with that one. Yeah. So yeah. I, I just think these guys have going to have to spend at least another 10 years fixing the friggin' industry because how do you how do you go so bad when you've got billion dollar and um company backing you and why because you know what because you want to be political yeah, yeah. at the end of the day that's all you want to do because you thought oh, i'll use comics to push my politics i think that's where well that's what call it you don't get that from manga you do not get that from friggin manga right you won't get that into manga there might be something in it but they just do their story and get, move on to the next lot mm -hmm. um you know they don't try to push their friggin whatever and even even with um trans issues they actually do it way better <laughs> they don't you know they actually make them human people they don't make them caricatures and stereotypes you know uh, yeah and Cy i think Cy cyber six comes to mind if you remember that mm. series it's a oh, manga and anime yeah mm. Yeah, so I mean, there is so that's the thing about I like about manga, anime, and manga is because there's so much diversity, not forced diversity, as they do with Marvel and DC, and you, um, you know, American commerce. It's just, just happens. It's just there. Hey, I'm gonna go to the shop. Oh, there's such as that. Cool. Oh, there's a street. There's somebody else there talking. Yeah, I'm having fun. Okay, let's move on. But these guys just force it down your throat so much that that's why nobody buys them anymore that's why they're like i mean it was like 600 issues six six hundred thousand issues of batman was only that came close to the top 20. i mean mm -hmm. seriously i mean this is uh for us as indie creators and you know uh constantine was right and i'm i'm gonna finish here soon uh was right when he said this is a time for independent creators to actually shine this is this is what image did in the 90s was basically say you know what we're going to do our own thing and create our own universe create our own characters that we own right that we have a say in and that we can be a part of and i think at the end of the day it's if, if the only thing that's going to save it is independent creators i don't think uh you know you don't you're gonna have the, maybe the big names will come in and stuff and and become independent leave the uh, hive mind behind and you know stand on their own two feet and decide to earn earning money for themselves and name for themselves because they're enough of them you know like like things said about mark miller boom had his career millerverse um miller world 50 million dollars boom he's still because like i don't know he was still a second producer on them but he's still a second producer on the netflix shows so he still gets his cut even as it goes forward that can't hamper would happen with all those beautiful things all these guys gave their lives and souls for working at marvel and dc well i mean but then mark miller i really like but he's got a whole house of artists and writers that work with him yeah. and then the question would be are you know i i think he does because from what i've read about him he's yeah. wants to give back what he got out of things he said he had a really good run of it and he yeah. wants to make the industry better for the people that work for him but I mean, the question is how he treats his people, not necessarily how, but it's really his like Disney, you know, like he's got his own house that he runs yeah. and he could be the guy controlling everything. But I don't yeah. think he does do that. From what I gather, he's quite a a, a good dude and I, I enjoy his writing a lot and he does, he's very it's involved fun. in his own creations. Yeah, it's fun. But, I'm not, uh, like that terror thing, what's a white terror or what is it called? Something terror? I like yeah. Nemesis a lot. Uh, Nemesis. Yeah. What, yeah. Was that Nemesis, terror? Yeah. yeah that's what that's what it was yeah so yeah. i mean that's that's a show sorry from what i hear um but i mean he knew how to play the game he knew when to get out right well he says that he was fortunate yeah. as well he's yeah. like quite humble and yeah. then he says like how he did that competition he said he wanted to give back to the comic community and the yeah. artists and writers 
um, and give them an opportunity like what he had. So, yeah, he seems like a good sort, but, you know, like ultimately he's at the top of the pyramid. And so when you're talking about one person making all the decisions, I mean, just because he was successful and maybe it is a smaller fish than some, there'll be all those people below him. So I suppose the question is, you know, what's the experience for them? I, I think fairly hopefully, good from what I gather, but. Yeah, hopefully, I mean, hopefully he's looking after his, you know, after those, those around him as well. I mean, like, uh, was it Albuquerque? You know, you had a whole bunch of artists that he brought in, like Goran. And was Goran part of it? I'm not sure Goran Pavlov was part of it. But, I mean, like, I have a few of his hardcovers and single issues from Kick-Ass. Kick and it's just, you know, you read that. It's just fun. It's fun. Yeah. You know, that's what I can't say about um, modern comics now from the mainstream. Oh, actually, I've got one. Last 10 mm -hmm. years, Ninja Turtles have pulled it back <laughs> a lot. Yeah. So last run -in, like I've been yeah. keeping up with that and like mm. they've they've kind of resurrected and changed that but kept it true to you know what the original fans would like yeah you know, all that old characters and shredder still you know being a part of it the foot mm. yeah I think yeah I mean that's the thing it's like you can only name one or two right whereas we could in the back and you know before the last 10 years we could name tons of them I guess the thing is if you put those into five years or decades it might be harder there's like a lot yeah. of them have been going for so long <laughs> like but i mean it's only in the last 10 years that they brought in all these new writers who have never written comic books before who never even knew what a comic mm. book was some of them like oh have you ever written comic books? no i've never read one i don't know that's about, probably but... the one thing where your argument about like the diversity and forcing things is because obviously they were hired to do the job because yeah. of something and if they're yeah. not a good artist if they're not a good writer to begin with then and they're given that role and the ability to change things then i suppose someone well, is steering it a certain way well i mean Faye said like something like about hey uh, we are um we don't even look at <laughs> we don't even look at what's popular we just pick and choose what we want it's like oh so you just take obscure characters and try to make them popular just because the guardian galaxy yeah so you don't have a fan base for them no because and politics. Yeah. politics yeah yeah so, it's like silly man it's like if you if you want to if you do a Wolverine movie tomorrow that's really good i'll go watch it i'll go buy the toys i'll go get the t-shirt if you do a silly stupid Wolverine comic book it's all about saying this and this about politics i won't even bother by sending one cent on it let alone torrent it or something like that right that's the thing about people. It's like they think, oh, it's all big, you people don't people only turn on things they would want to go see. It's people, but there's some shit that nobody even wants to touch, right? Like, look at um, you know, I don't even want to go um, go near a, a ten foot pole with Harlequin, and the pentabulous emancipation of whatever. Wow. I like Harlequin. I've got friggin' masks. I've got graphic novels. I've got t uh, I've got uh, I don't think I've got a teacher, but I have you know I've got a mask. I've got friggin' um, hats you know i've got toys i've got graphic, floppy comic but i will not touch that friggin movie with a 10-foot pole because it's not Harlequin. oh before i go i wanted to uh, open up one of these ones uh where is it this oh all right so i yeah. don't know what's in here oh oh look Oh, look at that. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. power girl. It's, yeah. it's talking about Jerry Conway. This is a. Look, uh, yeah, sure look at that. that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Person of the moment of the week or month or whatever. But this is cool. This is quite quite big piece. Mm -hmm. uh, I've actually got it here. Oh, it can fit somewhere. <laughs> yeah. I, was, um, I got this in 2018 as a gift. Hmm oh ah all right yeah so cool. yeah and now got the little one yeah yeah, awesome. yeah. <laughs> Good great I, I actually like power girl I, I think um it's been a while since i've read one of her stories so i might have to go sit down and read one of her comics but she's quite humorous from what i hear yeah she can Fun be character. yeah yeah all right guys thank uh, you have, thank a, you have a good day Constantinus. Yeah, nice yeah. to meet you. Have a good day too. Uh, nice to meet you all. Okay. It's night time here. Okay, sleep. <laughs>
<laughs> See you, buddy. 20, 20 past 10, Friday. Bye, everyone. <laughs>